Hey everyone, this is Ross. Today's video, we have like the last fig tasting of the season, um, at least in a mass quantity such as this, you know, where I actually have like a, a plate of figs in front of me. Um, it's really been something this year to get the quantity of figs that we did, the quality of the figs that we got at different times of the year, and then also the duration, the length of the season has been pretty nuts. Uh, our fall has been wonderful. We did rain quite a bit today and I harvested them actually after the rain. And I, some of these were in the greenhouse, but the, the, I would say 90% of them on this plate have not been from the greenhouse. They've actually been from outside. Um, few of them have been from pots and most of them have been from in-ground trees. And the in-ground trees, uh, they just keep going. I think they have a longer season than the potted trees. What's nice though is that with the potted trees, we can bring them in here in the greenhouse. And I actually have a couple varieties I want to harvest for you guys. This is De La Plata, a really tasty fig. And I think I'm going to do a separate, maybe I'll do a separate video on that. I'm not sure, depending on how good it is. But I also have a, uh, a Dell's Ermitons back here. We may have some others back in here. I haven't actually gotten a chance to fully scope out the greenhouse. But what I'll do is I'll do a taste testing with you guys right now. And we'll, we'll talk about with you guys uh, the different flavors that I'm getting here. I certainly, for whatever reason, or I'm, I'll just be happy if I get one good fig out of this. I'm not really expecting a whole lot. It's so late in the season. It's so cold that... For me to really get one good one is, uh, is, is pretty special. Let's just say that. This is a fig called Barbalone. And this is actually a, a they, people think it's a mutation of white Marseille. Because it's like a white Marseille or Laterula, however you would like to call it. There's different strains of them. And then, you know, there, there's so many nurseries that sell this fig. But they say this is a mutation of a white Marseille that turned black. It has a black skin, but the inside, it does. It actually looks just like white Marseille on the inside. And I have this, this is an in-ground tree. This is the first fig off of my in-ground Barbalone. It's not a very common fig, and I can't believe it took this long for people to get for me to get it, actually, because I, when I first heard about this fig, it was like five or six years ago. Let's try it. It's good. It's really good. Um, wow. Yeah. Pretty good. You know, it's not going to blow me away or anything, or anybody. It's not going to blow anybody away here, but... It's not bad. Here I have a, a sunbird unknown. This is an English brown turkey type. Um, I think this one was found somewhere in the south, if I'm not mistaken. And a lot of people who grow it think it tastes a lot like a peach. And I, I, my personal opinion is that all of the English brown turkeys, when ripened well, will taste like a peach. Let's see if this one does today. This is actually a fig. All the English brown turkey types I'm getting rid of because they just do not perform well here. Uh, it rained a lot, and a lot of these are just completely ruined. This is one right here. Pretty much ruined by the rain. And it's such a late fig that you just have to give it a head start. And I, I don't want to give a fig like this a head start. That's not bad at all. That's quite good. It's got a long hang time though, which I don't like. So it has to hang on the tree for quite some time. Here's one that's not as ripe. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, also quite good. Maybe this is gonna prove itself right here. We'll see. That's quite good. I'm not really picking up peach flavors, but you know, this one uh, definitely tastes a lot like berries and I like the flavor of it. I do. Actually, this is the first English brown turkey 
that I've really, really enjoyed. And it's this late in the season. Overall, it's just a very late fig that needs a head start here. And uh, it has a long hang time for those. And the flavor seems mediocre. It's definitely not the best fig ever, um, but I like it. In this current moment, I can't complain. So that's good. Uh, here's another honey fig I want to show you guys. This is big. This is a big fig, guys. This is like incredibly big. The reason why it's so big is that there wasn't many figs on this particular variety this year. I got, I think, about three or so. And uh, it's a good creamy fig called Bial. Ah, it's not that well ripened, as you can see. But when it's fully ripe, it's a nice looking honey fig. It's very creamy. It's kind of a lot like, um, like white Marseille, believe it or not. It's actually quite good. I think what I'm gonna do with a lot of these, I'm not really hungry right now. What I'm gonna do is actually, I think I'm gonna dry most of this. I'm drying a lot of fruit inside. Hopefully you guys saw that video. We talked a lot about drying different figs. This is a very late, anyone guess what this is? This is an Azores Dark. And uh, every fig I get off of this tree is impressive, man. It doesn't matter what time of the year it is, how much it's been raining. It was downpouring today. Didn't matter for this one. That's really good. I'm serious. That's uh, that's got some serious flavor. And another one I really like is the Malta Black, which is in my hand right now. And Malta Black has been drying up on the tree for me in the last month or so. It tastes like raspberry jam, this fig. It's incredible. Um, just like the Azores Dark in terms of like performance. There's minor differences, but it's definitely a different flavor. You can see on the bottom here, it's kind of got that corkiness to it that you see in some dried figs. They start to get these cork tints to them and they start to dry up. Yeah. And I actually think this year, I should say in the last, I would say in the last month or so, the Malta Blacks have been better than the Azores Darks. In the, the warmer temperatures, the uh, Azores Dark is, is a superior fig, I think. My, my Malta Black's been in the ground for four years now, and I think that really helps. These hardy Chicago types need a long time to mature, guys. You just need to be patient with them. Here is a Paradiso. Um, I think this one is from Bode, if I'm not mistaken. It's much flatter than I remember. Uh, yeah, this one's from Bode. Um, earlier in the season, it was much more elongated, and this year, it's very flat. And it looks really, really good. It's got some, a little bit of mold at the eye. I'm gonna take that out. Ooh, it's got a lot of mold at the eye. Huh. All right, let's try this. This should be good. I could have picked this one yesterday, but I don't know why I forgot to pick it. It's quite good. It has a very distinct grape flavor to it. Tastes like grape juice, guys. That's good. I was really, <laughs> oh my goodness. I was saying, I said in the beginning of the video, I'd be happy if I got one good fig and I've been, get, I've been getting a lot. These are like really good figs. <laughs> Even the, the Sunbird Unknown was really good. I would say the Barbalone and the Bial were under right, but still quite good. Um, this one I'm expecting not to be that ripe. This is Fico Gentile. 
And you can see it, see that white layer at the top? That's actually sap. So it's just not ripe. I don't want to eat that. We're gonna we're gonna put that aside. I don't want to get that irritation in my mouth. Here's a fig called Pecciolo Bianco. And um, wow, look at that. Whew. This thing is not ripe, I don't think. It was split on the tree. First year graft, very young, ripening at the very end of my season. I just wanted to see if this was common or not. This is a fig that's very popular in the Montebiolo region of Italy, in Carmignano. And it's definitely common. It looks quite good. Not that ripe. Too much sap. Too much sap. It's not ready. And I picked it just because it's split and I, I didn't want to have it spoil and not get a photo of it, you know? It actually looks quite good. It seems like it's got some potential to it, but I don't know. I like the fact it has some pretty good attributes, believe it or not. If uh, you know anything about that fig, it's quite a popular fig. Look at this. This is a Coldenom Grease. This one was greenhouse grown, greenhouse ripened. Yeah, they haven't been doing well. This fig's not getting the sugar content it needs. It's actually not good. Not good at all. A little underripe. But I think it really just needs a, a, a warm climate. Here is a, uh, a Cavaliere. And this one's got some mold in it because it's split open on the side. Even in the greenhouse, it's split. You can see the inside, that's definitely Cavalier. It almost looks a bit spoiled the way Cavalier is in the fall. It's a very acidic cherry flavor to it. It's quite a good fig. I just am getting rid of mine because it doesn't perform well enough it has a unique flavor profile in the in the terms of the cherry acidicness but there's other figs i have like fico rubato which i'm also getting rid of hated the argentile also has that cherry flavor and there's another one san baggio which i hope to ripen next year which should have that acidic cherry flavor and san baggio and hated the argentile should both be much earlier. They are much earlier than Cavalieri and Fico Rubato. So for that, I'm getting rid of it. Um, all right, the last one here. We saved a good one. This is Blanche de Duce Cezanne, and I hope it's ripe because I really was trying to be patient. Ooh, ooh, oh my goodness. Okay, we're in business. <laughs> Look at that. That's something there. Wow. That's so... It's almost purple, guys. It's quite red. It's going to be very jammy. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Especially this time of the year. That's real good. This is from an in-ground tree. That's just a great fig, guys. It really is. I'm going to pick this Dells Armatons over here. You want to talk about an incredibly good tasting fig? This is it right here. This is the Dells Armatons. We dropped it. But look at that drop of honey there on the bottom. Ain't that something. You know, I'm going to zoom in, I think, for you guys on this one. Look at this.
This thing, I don't know what to say about this, guys. It's got that black Madeira flavor to it. The drip of honey. It's just a gorgeous, very tasty fig from Ponza's collection. Wow, look at that. Look at this bad boy. <laughs> Talk about being photo worthy. Oh my goodness. Woo. We have some R-rated fig stuff going on right now, guys. Wow. All right, let's try this guy. Again, this one was in the greenhouse to finish it off for the season. Uh, I don't know how late it is, to be honest with you. It doesn't seem as late as uh, I think it's going to be, but we'll see. Yo. That's real good. Yeah. The flavor is a little watered down. But that's really good. That is a really high quality piece of fruit, guys. I don't know, man. I think that may be the Black Madeira replacement. We'll see. I think I found at least one replacement. Alrighty, guys. I think we'll end there. I still have two more figs I want to review that are in here. We have Ponte Tresa. We have, uh, what is this one here? De La Plata. But I want to do their own separate video for this. So we'll do that. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. I hope you enjoyed this. See you later.